Welcome to another installment of Anime Reviews. Today I'm taking a look at another 1980s Japanese anime called Urusei Yatsura. Yes folks, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite animes, created by none other than Ramiko Takahashi. I first saw this back in my school years in 1995 to 1998, so that's basically about it. And without any further, let us start the show. It begins with Atara Moroboshi, the lecherous, perverted dumbass who is unlucky. That is one unlucky guy! Then, he bumps into a monk named Sakurambo saying that horrible things will happen to Moroboshi. Atara meets Mr. Invader, who challenges Atara to a duel. If Invader wins, he invades Earth, and if he loses, he'll go back home. Ooh, who's that busty Oni girl? Well, believe it or not, it's Lum. Quite the looker, ain't she? So, all Atara has to do is grab her horns and win. He tries and tries, but fails. On the tenth day, the Earth will soon meet Armageddon if Moroboshi doesn't win. So what does he do? He pulls out some kind of gun with a plunger and, censor please, by taking off her bra and grab her horns. He saves Earth, but marries Lum. That is true, and remember, if Atara cheats... Yeah, that happens. We get to meet Megane, Kakugari, Chibi, and Perm, who are Lum's stormtroopers. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's who they're called. About Ataru, despite him chasing girls and being unlucky... He is an idiot! Thank you, Dr. Claw. Not only that, he causes so much trouble having everyone to pay the damages he creates. On the other hand, he possesses superpowers such as speed and being virtually indestructible. Plus, he is very stubborn, though deep down, there is more to him, especially he cares for Lum a lot. Shinobu, Atara's ex, may be cute and all, but when she gets angry, she has super strength. Episode 2 features Jara Ten, Lum's toddler cousin. Like her, he can fly, and instead of electricity, he breeds fire, but doesn't get along with Atara. <laughs> In the third episode, Lum had an ex-boyfriend named Ray, who may be handsome at first. <coughs> yeah, all the girls are totally going gaga over him, except he turns into a giant tiger triceratops monster whenever he gets all excited. <coughs> and loves to eat a lot. Next, you have Sakura, the priestess, and what a sexy babe she is. She happens to be an amazing exorcist to expel evil spirits, and she is the school's nurse. In one episode, Atara once sealed Lum's power with yellow ribbons. That way, he wouldn't get electrocuted by her. Oyuki, another alien princess from Neptune, which is even colder than Uranus, and it's filled with lots of females. Oyuki, however, can manipulate ice, cold weather, snow, water, and can open portals from place to place. I find that pretty cool. She also has a pet named Bebo, who thinks of the ladies as his sisters. One of my favorite episodes is Pitter Patter Christmas, where Megane and his friends plot to embarrass Ataru and have Lum leave him at the same time. Megane and his stormtroops set up a date to fool Ataru by hiring a girl, giving her a fictional name. I gotta say, that is just creepy. Lum then finds out and turns things around. Before the end of the episode, when Lum gave Atara a tiger-striped scarf, it was reused and reanimated in the fifth movie, the final chapter. For the animation, well, you know it was from the early 80s, done by Studio Pirat, Pirat, or whatever the hell you want to pronounce it. And yes, it is the same studio who also worked on one of my favorite shonen animes, Yu Yu Hakusho, in 1992. The later seasons of the show was also done by Studio Dean, known for their work for Ranma One Half in 1989. 
Speaking of which, there were characters that appeared as cameos in Ranma, like in one episode, Shampoo demonstrates a cure that will somehow rid of Ranma's curse. She pours a potion, turning a dog into a chibi-sized Ataru, and that Toshio Furukawa named his dog Ataru. You'll notice the characters' voices in this show voice for the Dragon Ball series, Sailor Moon, and again, Ranma 1 Half and Yu Yu Hakusho. I do know some of them from Shigeru Chiba, Mayumi Tanaka, Yuko Mita, Tesho Genda, once again Toshio Furukawa, and of course, legendary Masako Nozawa. I forgot to mention one thing about Lum. She can also cook foods, which are extremely spicy. Even Moroboshi tried a lollipop that was spicy. Not to mention, she can create various devices. I remember an episode where Sakura eats a full course meal for free in Hawaii by using beauty pills. She eats all the food and never gains a pound. That is so freaking insane! Well, she has to keep her girlish figure. There are a couple of characters that I want to talk about, one being Shutaro Mendo, this handsome rich dude from the Mendo clan. All the girls in school love him. He has a sword, has a rivalry with a Taru, and he is afraid of the dark. A kid his age is scared of the frickin' dark? Seriously? Ran, this red-haired alien may be cute, but beware when she gets jealous. She can suck people's youth just by kissing them and can restore their youths doing the same thing. Karama, not to be confused with the character from YYH, yet another alien princess who wants to find a mate. Like the Onis, the Karasu Tengus are also mythical Japanese creatures. She possesses a leaf that creates winds and hurricanes. Ben Ten, Lum Oyuki and Ran's biker babe childhood friend, and is one of the gods of Luck Clan. She loves riding her air bike, likes Earth and the Earthlings, she's strong-willed and has a rough personality, and a surprisingly cute face. By the way, the name Ben Ten sounds just like the name of the show Ben Ten on Cartoon Network, doesn't it? Tsubame, a wizard trained from the West and is Sakura's fiancé. Lum's mother, who wears a Chiang Sam and can fly, also possess electric shocks like her daughter, only she does not speak Japanese. In episode 57, she does speak Japanese. And finally, Ryunosuke Fujinami, a martial artist and possessed near super strength who looks like a boy but is actually a girl. Even her father treats her like a dude and she despises that. In the 68th episode, Princess Kurama gave Ryu's father a gender-changing ray gun. And that's when Rumiko Takahashi got the idea to create Ranma One Half. She appears to be more popular than Mendo with the girls, that kind of bothers both of them. And you know what? She kind of looks like Ryoga Hibiki, sort of like twins if you look at them. The show does have references and cameo appearances of Star Wars, Godzilla, and the like. Yes, it's dubbed in English, it is rare, and it's horrible. However, the Dracula episode had better voices. Thank you for waiting! Hey, hi! Hi. The bat just asked me to come over. <laughs> Tell me, are you really a girl? Time to wrap things up. Urusei Yatsura is one of the best animes from the 80s I have ever watched. I didn't see that many episodes. It is long with a total of 195 episodes, and I don't think I would watch all of them. So far, I've only seen 60. There's also 11 OVAs and 6 theatrical films, and I might review them someday. Well, folks, this closes another installment of Anime Reviews. Till then, in the words of ZZ Toasty, this is Biako. Peace out.